hello welcome back to my channel this is gonna be a tag video this is oh my god I love filming tags and Hannah from Smoky Glow actually came up with her own tag and obviously I had to film it I even put a comment on her video saying like I'm gonna film this and I haven't even heard the questions yet I love her channel I love her personality and her love for makeup and how opinionated she is and still very educated and so mature for her age. I mean, I was a hot mess at that age. I, w I would not have been friends with myself at that age. Like, <laughs> let me just tell you that. Not that I was like a bad person. I was just, I, I, I didn't have everything figured out. Let's just, let's just put it like that. So I will leave her video and like her channel down below so you can check her out. You should definitely check her out. I did talk about her uh, a, a while ago actually in like create smaller creators that you should really check out and she has grown so much from that like not from that since that like not because of me obviously because of herself because she's awesome what is going on what's going on stop it stop it stop it no respect anyways you're gonna have to live with that because that that's just that's just life anyways I'm so proud of her she's at 10k now and I knew she'd get there and she's gonna go so far because she has such a good personality and people love her videos for good reason. Anyway, she did, oh my god, 14 questions, Hannah. That's why your video was so long. <laughs> Anyways, I did film this look, by the way, it should already be up. I did use the Certify palette by, Certify? The Destiny palette by Certify. I need lunch. I need lunch badly. Oh god, don't sing, honey, don't sing. Okay. First question is, how many years have you been on YouTube? Have I said what the tag is called? I haven't. It's called the, yeah, you read the title. It's called the uh, small creator tag. Funny story, when I am uh, filming this, I am just a couple of people from uh, reaching 50K, which is so mind blowing and just so weird. And I'm gonna get to that in a bit, just speaking of this whole small creator tag, but yeah. First question, how many years have you been on YouTube? I've been on YouTube for a little over three years. I did do a get ready with me on the, like published it on the day when I've been on YouTube for three years. So I've been on YouTube for a little over three years and some people grow really fast on YouTube and some people don't. I personally don't feel like I've grown super fast uh, although some people would say I have uh, I but on the other hand I never thought that I'd be on YouTube for this long and I never thought I'd reach the numbers that I'm at right now so everything is just very I'm winging it <laughs> I'm really winging it but I've been on YouTube for three years and I've been having so much fun and that's why I'm still here I thought it was just gonna be a a thing, a passing thing, like I do it a year or so, but yeah, I'm, I'm still here, I'm still loving it, I'm Not, you're not getting rid of me yet, okay? What was your first video about? My first video was an H&M Beauty, uh, like, haul, uh, just when H&M Beauty has re had released their stuff, and my video, that is still one of my most watched videos on YouTube, I've talked about this before, uh, I did a video on, on English, see, this is why I should stick to Swedish, I did in... <laughs> I did a video in English about H&M Beauty and H&M Beauty had only released in Sweden at that time. So every video about H&M Beauty was in Swedish. So my video, I'm pretty sure my video was the first video on YouTube in English about H&M Beauty and a lot of people did watch it because it was released on YouTube before the items were released uh, in other countries in Sweden. So I do get what it, why it got a lot of views. I didn't really see that coming to be honest but i'm happy i posted that and it's a lot of uh mm, eh, more than more than it is in my normal videos but i am so proud of myself for actually doing it i was like you know what you just have to do it just put it up there uh, and i did uh, third question is who is your dream collab so this is the thing like dream collab i just want to do a collab with someone in real life like i want to do a video with someone in real life I'm living in a smaller city in Sweden. All of these people that I love watching and that I have as YouTube friends and as I, I call them friends now, like my friends, most of them are in US and I just, I just want to do videos with people in real life. 
That's my dream collab. The collab that happens in real life. I, 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 I really hope I make enough money one day on YouTube so that I actually can travel to people I want to collab with. Yes, sweetie, are you bored? Uh, number four is such a weird question. Uh, it's what would it mean to you to make it on YouTube? Honey, don't, don't mess with the lights. The dog is here and he's just laying down here and it's really crowded where I film. Let me fix the lights again. So for him to find somewhere where he actually can lay down, it's a bit of a puzzle. <laughs> but he's down here now. So what would it mean to make it on YouTube? Uh, funny question about me being... Are you leaving again? Sweetie? Sweetie? Sir, can I help you? Okay, funny story. Let's go back to what I talked about in the beginning about the 50k thing. Um, when I was very new on YouTube, I had like a thousand subscribers. I got a thousand subscribers really fast because my first video did go really well. I got like 20,000 on that video really fast and I was very shocked. I mean, it's not viral, but for being a first video, I think I did pretty good. Um, so I got a thousand subscribers really fast. In like a month, I got a thousand subscribers and I was invited to go to YouTube events. Like uh, YouTube Sweden invited me to go to events and network with other YouTubers. And I obviously thought that this was so cool and so fun. So I went to a couple of those events and I remember going to the first event. Uh, I met four different YouTubers, Swedish YouTubers that are seen as pretty big YouTubers in Sweden. And I know that all four of them at some point, no, five YouTubers. Yeah, five YouTubers. And I know that all five of these at some point have only worked with social media. Like social media wasn't their job. So for me, meeting them, I was like, okay, so these people are actually doing YouTube as a career. That is so cool, getting that view, because I never, that was never my goal with YouTube, to have it as a career, and it's not my career right now either. I, I have a, a normal desk job that I go to, like a 7 to 4 job <laughs> that I go to. This is something that I do on my free time. Um, and I met those people, and they were like, I because I was like, okay, so what do you do for a living? And they're like, social media. I was like, okay, cool. And they all at that time had between uh, 50,000 and 150,000 subscribers. All of those five people were somewhere in that range. Um, so I was like, okay, so obviously in Sweden, when you hit 50,000 subscribers, you could make this a living. That's pretty cool. Uh, and obviously I was a thousand subscribers then, and I never saw myself reaching even that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. So I thought of these people as big YouTubers because these people are seen in sponsored videos in Sweden. Uh, one of them came out with a book. Um, these people have networks. They do like soda commercials. Like these people are known. They go on like, you know, meetups and tours, like YouTube tours and like, VidCon, but in Sweden, so obviously not as big, but I hope you understand what I mean. They get invited to events, they walk the red carpet, like, that's what these people do. And for me to reach 50k now, I mean, I don't get invited to these events. I'm basically the, you don't get to be a prophet in your own hometown. <laughs> because my channel is in English, obviously, I, I have a lot of Swedish uh, followers, I do. Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, I do get questions sometimes if I want to do a video in Swedish and not really because it means that I will have to put subtitles on it and that's just something that seems like a lot of work and since this is something I do in my free time, I feel like that is taking on too much work. So I quickly answered that question as well. But it just feels so weird now that I am actually at 50k. Did not see that one coming. Uh, so for me, at that time, I felt like they had made it because for them, it was their goal to work with social media. They wanted to work with social media. So they felt like they had made it. It wasn't my goal to work with social media. So do I feel like I've made it? Not really. Uh, I feel like maybe now that I've been on YouTube for a while, at that point, I felt like getting 50,000 subscribers, you would have made it. Now when I'm at 50,000 subscribers, I don't feel the same way, but it is very unreal to be at that point where I, three years ago was like, oh my god, these people made it. Um, and now also, like, 
looking at like how YouTube works and getting more into it. I get that. I mean, these aren't these aren't rich people, at least not most of them. Uh, what is that noise? Could you not, sir, sir, sir? I'm sorry, you're gonna have to live with that. But now, if you've made it, I'd say making a collab at this point. That's when you've made it because that's when you, even, even a company realizes the impact you have and decides to collab with you because they think that you could benefit their brand. I feel like nowadays that's when you made it. Uh, and so I don't really think that it has anything to do with money at all. Okay, th that question took a long time and we're at 12 minutes. Could you s stop me when I'm talking so much? Uh, five, what is your end goal on YouTube? Starting out, I just wanted to get some friends. Uh, now, I feel like I have friends. I feel like now my end goal is to actually meet people in real life, not just through computer screens. That is my end goal. My end goal is not to make YouTube my career. I love creating videos. I love reviewing makeup. I love doing looks. I love filming. Um, I feel like YouTube is how I felt about modeling. Like when I started modeling, my goal was never to make modeling my career. I never wanted to be a big model and I knew I could never be a big model. I, I knew my limits, but I was like, cause I did work full time as a model for a year. Like I didn't have any other jobs. And that's basically how I see YouTube. Like if I ever was got, given the chance to just work with YouTube, I might look at it the way I looked at modeling. Like this isn't the end station. This is something that I could do for a year just because it's so much fun and then leave it because I don't know if I would be passionate about YouTube for my entire life. And also I like having coworkers. I like going to an actual workplace and I do have a degree and I do want to work with my degree. So I don't want to just like, I mean, I went to university, I got a degree, I want to use it. So would I ever work full time with YouTube? That's not my end goal, but if I was given the opportunity, I might like have a break from my career and do that and then come back to it because that's, that's the kind of career I have. I can actually do that, but I don't, that's not my goal. That's not what I'm, I'm trying to do. Um, I like it right now. I like what I'm doing right now. So I would say my end goal is to actually meet the friends that I have made over the internet to meet them in real life. That's what I would love to do. And uh, what is the hardest part about YouTube? Time management. <laughs> I am the worst. I have so many ideas that I want to do. I have so many tutorials I want to do, reviews I want to do, chit chatty videos I want to do. I have so many things I want to compare and show you and talk about. And I wish I had more time, but I don't. Um, film, preparing, filming, editing, uploading, and everything that goes around takes so much more time than I could have ever imagined before with YouTube. And when YouTubers say that doing YouTube isn't just filming, it everything takes so much time. Holy bananas, they were not kidding. Everything takes so much longer than I thought it would. So time management is actually the hardest part about YouTube. Just finding the time to actually do everything you want to do and then also prioritizing between the things that you actually you know what i'm not going to be able to do this or i'm not going to be able to be active on this social media platform as well that is really hard and that has taken me a really long time to figure out like so how much do i want to do um and there are so many more things that I wish I could do. I know that a lot of people are probably gonna say negative comments is the most, but I, I don't care. Okay, when I, okay. Most negative comments you get are from people that aren't really watching your videos. I mean, they don't care. They may, they're probably not even subscribed. Uh, it hurts a bit if it's people that you, you notice in their comments that they are actually watching your videos and they're just being very mean. Um, that's when it hurts because when people, when I, when it's someone I've never seen before and they comment something and I'm just like, you obviously haven't watched any of my videos. You don't really know me. You don't know my personality. I don't really care. I don't block them, <laughs> but there is a very nifty, nifty feature on YouTube where you can hide the user from the channel. 
best feature ever YouTube that actually enables people to still watch your videos uh, and to comment but nobody will ever see their comment except themselves it's very evil so they will think that they made a comment on your channel but they will never have any comments back they will never have any likes or dislikes because nobody else but themselves will see the comment so I will never have to see their comment again but they can still watch my video so I can get their AdSense <laughs> It is so evil, but I love it because if you're so if you are so stupid that you will watch videos of people you don't like, then at least let them have their AdSense. I'm not gonna block you, but I never want to see your comment again. I actually did that with a girl today. She was very rude, like saying that I looked actually. I mean, she was she was using words that you should not use, and I don't have any words like filtered. I don't have any words that are like automatically like put in the weight bin or like rejected. I just, if I find a comment that's really like that, I would just block the user from, uh, block the user's comments from my channel. So they are just put in a black hole where they think that they are commenting, but they're actually not and I find it pretty hilarious. So I don't, I don't really care. Uh, what is the best part about YouTube? Oh my god, reading your comments is the best part about YouTube. It is the best part about YouTube. I wish I could answer each and every comment. I did that for a really long time, but it's just getting out of hand and I try to answer as many as possible. I try to go in at least once a day and just answer a bunch and look at them and read them and just... You're so amazing and you have no idea what your comments actually mean to me. That's the best part about YouTube. That and the friends that I make through YouTube. Amazing. The funniest comment you've ever gotten. I don't know if I can remember like a specific comment, but honestly, the comments that you leave under my like new makeup releases going on the wishes or not, they're the funniest comments ever. I find myself laughing out loud at the comments you leave towards the products that I talk about. Oh my god, if you want to get a good laugh, read through the comments, uh, the comment section under those videos. You're so funny. Like, there's some really witty people, like, hanging out in that comment section. I always laugh at your comments. They're the best. Um, what is the meanest comment you've ever gotten? The meanest? I did get a comment. I actually did get two comments. Um, oh my god, this is a long story. Should I? No, oh, I'll just take it. There was a brand that I talked about in my new makeup releases, going on wish list or not. Uh, for you that watch my videos, you know that I'm not doing a review and I'm not like saying anything about the products at all. I'm just letting you know what products are out there and uh, whether or not I'm gonna buy it personal opinion. I'm allowed to tell you whether or not I feel like it's something for me. And there was a product that I said that I didn't think it was, I thought it was too expensive for what you got. And I said, I think that this product looks good, but I wouldn't pay this price for it. And that's just my personal opinion. I mean, you've heard me talk about prices so many times. I have said the same thing about like Natasha Denona and like Pat McGrath. I mean, I bet they're awesome, but it's not the price range that I feel comfortable with. Um, this brand actually had a like a fan group on Facebook and somebody posted in that fan group and I got so many comments, really hateful comments. And there was actually two people telling me that I like literally should just go kill myself over a freaking eyeshadow. And that's like, I will never get that. That if you leave that kind of comment, to anyone, regardless of what they said or done, you are the bad person. You're the evil person and somebody should go and take internet away from you. Because that is straight up fucking horrible. Like, there is no excuses. No excuses. And these are grown up people. These were grown up people leaving these comments. Really nasty comments uh, about me, my looks, how I talk, how I sound, everything you could possibly nitpick about a person. And I was like, if I didn't want to buy from the brand before, do you really think I feel like talking about this brand ever again, ever buying anything from that brand? I am never going to talk about the brand again. I, I haven't. I haven't. And I don't care how nice this owner is or how amazing the product is. 
that just left a very bad taste in my mouth. I thought that that was, that was too much. I got like 50 comments. I woke up and I have 30 comments and they just came, kept coming in. And it was just like this mob mentality just because I said I didn't want to buy something. It was horrible. Uh, anyways, what is the um, next question? What other subject matter could you create a YouTube channel about? When I started my YouTube channel, and one of the questions is why I didn't start it, that's gonna be the question after, so I'm not gonna get into that yet. But I was thinking like, because I am I was at least, uh, I don't any, okay I do, but not that much as I used to. I was very much into gaming, I love computer gaming. Uh, I played World of Warcraft for several years, and I was actually thinking first like, do I wanna make a channel about gaming, or do I wanna make a channel about makeup? And then I decided that there was more things that I could do in the makeup area that wouldn't be so repetitive. Um, like instead of like, I, I was thinking about starting a Twitch channel because I was like, I do gaming because it's fun. But if I start a Twitch channel, I'm going to have to be more like serious about my gaming. I can't just like skip it for a week because I was at that time I was playing pretty serious, but I was also sometimes taking breaks. So like I can't take a break then because that's not gonna make any sense. Um, so I decided to keep gaming something that I did for fun so I wouldn't be pressured about it. And then I was instead gonna start a channel about makeup because I felt like there was more things that I could talk about within the beauty sphere than just sitting and gaming and tw in the Twitch channel. So I was actually thinking about starting a Twitch channel and streaming gaming first, but I decided not to and I'm really happy about that now because like you can see on my channel, I do have a lot of things to talk about regarding beauty and makeup. And I'm so excited that I started with this. I do still game a bit, but not to the extent that I did. So I, it was the best choice ever. There are so many questions, Hannah. <laughs> the 11th question is, why did you start your YouTube channel? And I have talked about this before. I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to have more people to talk about makeup with. Uh, and to be fair, I wanted to have more people to talk to period because oh my god my lash is getting stuck uh, I didn't really have I still I don't have that many friends and for really long times in my life I felt very lonely um so I really just wanted to have more people to chat with and just feel like <sighs> just when I started my YouTube channel I had just gotten out of a really bad friendship where I just she wasn't very nice to me. She wasn't ever listening to me. She was always trivializing everything that I said, saying that the things that I went through weren't that important or that the things that I was feeling wasn't, didn't really matter. And breaking up our friendship was the best thing I've ever done. And I, I also realized that she had been talking a lot of shit about me. <laughs> uh, and but after that, because it was a very toxic friendship and I felt very insecure about their whole friendship and all the people around it. It was like more of a, like the, the mean girl situation, but in real life. And I was like just taking a step back and I was like, I'd rather be alone than have this kind of friendship. Um, and I do have a couple of friends. I do. Unfortunately, none of them live here in my city. So that's why I don't really hang out with anyone. I'll be honest. I... I haven't had a glass of wine with a friend in months, year maybe. Um, I never go for coffee with anyone. Nobody ever, like, like, like we have some friends in common. Like and the reason why I can talk about this on my YouTube channel is because nobody of my friends watch my YouTube channel, except the ones that are my friends, but unfortunately do not live here in my town. Um, and when my best friend lived here in Linköping, we hung out every day and it was amazing. And I adore her and I wish we still could, but we are living our different lives in different cities. So we hang out as much as we can, but none of the somewhat friends group that I hang out with want to hang out with me if we're not in a group and I don't I don't blame them if they don't want to hang out with me they don't want to hang out with me I tried a bit like inviting them here having like a movie night or going to the theater or like having a glass of wine and 
I, I ended up always calling them and they never really called me and when I stopped calling them we just stopped hanging out <laughs> and I mean so I don't really have any friends here that's mainly why I do so much YouTube as well because I have the time I don't I don't do anything else on my free time except YouTube and hang out with my pets and, and my fiance, which is amazing, uh, but he works a lot I and mean, he's a PhD student So that's also why I have a lot of time because they work 24-7 um, But yeah, I was just really lonely and I'm really happy that I created this YouTube channel because I do feel less lonely And maybe that's also why my like my end goal with YouTube is to meet friends that I've made through YouTube because Well I'm not really rich in the friends department, let me just tell you that. So yeah, that became a bit sad, but hopefully with time that changes. And that's just something that I've learned like by just being a bit older, that friends actually can come and go as well. You never know who's going to stick around and who's not. And if you have a friendship that you feel gives you more negativity than positivity, it is not impossible to end a friendship. You actually can in case it doesn't make you happy. Um, uh, what video are you embarrassed by? Ooh, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of videos where I'm just, oh, it's just cringe material and I don't want to watch it. Oh, but oh, let me tell you. One of my most watched videos is me swatching the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette and I actually forget to swatch one shade and that's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty embarrassing, but I mean, it was in the beginning, I was still getting the hang of it, and um, to be honest, these things still happen, but I mean, I would probably catch it in editing now, in a way that I wouldn't, that I didn't back then. Now I would probably catch it in editing, but I didn't back then, so that's pretty embarrassing. Uh, what video are you the most proud of? Ooh. I uh, I don't have like a specific video that I'm the most proud of, but I would say the videos that I am the most proud of are the videos where I do like several looks in one video because that takes me several days to film and edit and every time I get one of those up I always feel like oh, like accomplished <laughs> in a weird way, like I did some like something big and I got it up. I'm also really proud that I do some travel vlogs because it's really fun to show like my family <laughs> what we did when we were out traveling. My mom loves my travel vlogs. So that's really nice. I'm really proud of those that like my YouTube can also be for like my family um, because my mom doesn't watch all of my other videos she watches some here and there but not all of them my mom is also my biggest supporter but i'll say that the videos where i like really put a lot of time and effort into a video like filming for several days doing several looks those are the videos that i'm the most proud of because i'm like this took a while <laughs> this took a while um what is your first youtube memory and if I hadn't heard Hannah's answer, I might have answered this differently, but I did. Is this oh, white rim, sexy? But I did hear her answer, and so this is the thing. I didn't know that makeup on YouTube was a thing. I did answer this in a Q and A long while ago, like what made you like create an account or something i didn't have an account on youtube i only used youtube to watch new music videos and to watch different uh things about uh, world of warcraft because if, if you've ever played world of warcraft and if you play world of warcraft on a higher level you know that you have to read up on the things that you're gonna do before you do them like i was watching um i was watching a lot of like tutorials or like walkthroughs on like bosses on hard modes because otherwise I would have never <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do um so I didn't have an account I just that's just how I used YouTube and I still get recommended new content from World of Warcraft channels because I used to watch that a lot back in the days um and I was on I was not following any like influencers on Instagram, none of them, but I was following a couple of brands, one of them being Gerard Cosmetics. I was following them on Instagram. I don't really know how I found them because I 
I don't know how I found them, but I did follow them on Instagram and they published a picture of a girl and her makeup was flawless. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Gerard because I know that they were one of the first brands that I followed on Instagram. Anyways, the, uh, a brand <laughs> published a picture of a girl and she was beautiful, her makeup was beautiful and they tagged her like in the text and I was like, I looked at her profile and I was like, oh she has so many makeup looks, so many cute looks and I was like, I actually put follow on her because I was like, I want to see more looks from her and a couple of days later she put up another picture and it says that this tutorial or something like that is live on my YouTube channel. I was like, is that a thing? <laughs> I didn't know that that was a thing. Uh, so I went to YouTube and I searched her name and I found uh, a tutorial and I, I don't even know if it was the same tutorial to be honest. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. I watched the tutorial and I was smitten. I thought it was amazing. I was like, I didn't know that this was a thing. I didn't know that people used YouTube for makeup. It's amazing. I was always interested in makeup. But my makeup skills, of course, and my like techniques have developed since being on YouTube, obviously. And in the end of her video, she said something along the lines of like, if you want to see more things, don't forget to subscribe. And I was like, is that a thing? I didn't know people did that. And I tried to hit the subscribe button um, and it said you had to be logged in. And I didn't have an account, so I actually made an account just to be able to subscribe to this girl's um, account and that was the first subscription I ever had on my YouTube account because I made the account specifically to be able to subscribe to her. Uh, and after a while, of course, like I subscribed to more people, I found some more channels to watch, but she is the reason I made my YouTube account. She is the first makeup tutorial I watched on YouTube and if it hadn't been for her I don't know if I would have started my YouTube channel which is pretty cool uh, and the girl was Jacqueline Hill by the way um, so that's why I just I can't unsubscribe from her because she's the first channel I watch she's the f she's the first channel I subscribe to she's the reason why I even have this account and I know it's silly and I know it's nostalgic and I know that she's done a lot of shady things but if it wasn't for Jacqueline Hill, I would not be on this platform. I would not have started an account when I did. And I maybe would have never found makeup on YouTube in a time where I actually could start doing it myself. So yeah, that's the reason why I am on YouTube. And that's pretty much it. Wouldn't it be cool to actually tell her this story someday? I would love to be able to tell her this story someday. That would be amazing. Maybe that is my end goal. That is my YouTube end goal, to someday be able to tell her this story. That would be cool. That would be really cool. I think that was the last question. Let me see. Yes, that is the last question. Thank you so much for being with me through this whole time, because this, this video is a year and a half. I hope you saw that in the beginning and like brought a snack. <laughs> I wish I brought a snack. No time management. That's what I'm telling you. That is the hardest part with YouTube. I have no idea what I'm doing. That's just that's just the way it is. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because like I said, I do upload a bunch of things. My goal is to have at least five videos a week and so far I'm doing that and sometimes a bit more. <laughs> so thank you again for watching this. I will see you in my next video which will probably be tomorrow. Let's be honest. <laughs> Bye!